This is Retirement Roadmap Radio with Mark Fricks from Master Plan Retirement Consultants. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is Retirement Roadmap Radio with your host, Mark Fricks. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Retirement Roadmap Radio with me, Mark Fricks, your host and our co-host today, as always, the illustrious Mr. Tony Shore that will be joining us in just a moment. Have a really good show. I know I always say that, but it really is always a good show. So I'm, I'm, I'm like always right on this. But we do have a show <laughs> that uh, uh, is a little bit different today. You know, we're, we, we talk a lot about money and estate planning and taxes. And so today we're going to talk a little bit more about um, retirement itself. You know, I spend a lot of time with our clients uh, uh, talking about the transition it is a major life transition. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit today and, and what to be ready for. It's what my next book's going to be about. Uh, hopefully it won't take me 10 years to write it like I did the last one. Um, but I'm already in year, in year four, so maybe it will take me 10 years to write it. I'm not sure. But uh, the title of the show is 10 Things Not to Do When You Retire. So, Tony, why don't you uh, pop in here and join us and say good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, whatever time of day it happens to be, but I'm alive and awake this morning. I'm ready for the show. Uh, again, I drank about 60 cups of coffee just so I could keep up with you today, Mark. I, 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 I it, It's hard, but I try. I, I'm reading books on the outside just to try to keep up. You know that. Well, you're a little bit behind, but <laughs> six, six more cups of coffee, you'll be good to go. <laughs> oh. uh, or my wife tells me I'm a lot behind. That's the problem. Oh, so. Well. Well, diet and exercise might fix it, but well, she should know. <laughs> but Mark, <laughs> every week on the show, you always have some great tips, strategies, things for our listeners. And I know you've been dealing with that. This is a busy time of year for you. I mean, a lot of yeah. people because, well, the markets were crazy in January. We've got tax season is upon us. And so a lot of clients and a lot of our listeners have been calling you with some questions. And I know you're going to talk about some things that they need to know today. Uh, but to answer your question, I have been great. I'm doing good today. I've had a, a good week at work and with the family. How about yourself? What's going on over there? Oh, well, you hit it uh, right on the head. We have been super busy. Uh, add to all of what you said. It's the fact it's the new year and you have people with new year's resolutions. Yep. You have people that are like, Hey, I need to, I need to get on the track of retirement planning. Sure. I need a will, or, you know, all this kind of stuff. So you have some of that happening as well. We also crank back up our workshops. And so, you know, we've taught six workshops in the last two weeks. Uh, and so every time we teach a workshop, we'll have 20 or 30 people wanting to meet with us and, and, and talk about what we talked about. So that has cranked up a lot, too. So we're adding sure. staff. We added staff last year. We're adding staff. We're already interviewing it this year to add staff to, to take everything else off of me. So that all I'm doing is being in front of clients, in front of classrooms, in front of radio, in front of TV. And that that's my job is just to, you know be out there and take care of clients. Um, and so they are doing a great job with that. They're getting it off my plate. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get to the point to where, uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm just doing nothing but that. I think right now the thing bogging me down are emails. And oh. I don't mean that from clients. I mean from you know, the 400 from junk. And I don't know how to get rid of them. So I have to go through and click and delete them all because most of them are junk. One or two might be an article I might want to read. But that's probably the biggest. If I had an email associate, I think I'd be okay. <laughs> well, I think I think you could get uh, somebody uh, in there who's an expert. Uh, if you use, depends on what email program you use, who can uh, help you filter filter all the spam out. So maybe, uh, maybe a better spam filter. But uh, you said it's funny. I, I I had to chuckle. I wanted to jump in there because you said you're hiring, and I'm like, yeah, you don't have to tell people you're hiring because you run a business, and so <laughs> we assume that right now every business yeah. in America is hiring. I think yeah. that's a safe, isn't that a safe assumption? I, it that, is, it is. But we've not lost anybody. That's the great part. We, we never laid well, off. There, we never that's lost That's really good. So yeah. we're just adding to the structure and, and, yep. and, and that kind of good stuff. So that's, that's, that's a great problem to have. 
that is a good problem to have, and that's huge. Well, okay, where do we begin today? What's your what's the topic du jour? As yeah, so say? again, 10 things not to do when you retire. And again, it's more about life. And so the first okay. one, just to kind of give you an idea of the direction we're going in, is to enjoy retirement, but don't become undisciplined. And so this is kind of how things happen. So, so somebody retires and, you know, the first day or two, they sleep late, you know, first few days, hey, it feels good to lay in bed, da, da, da. And they start puttering around the house and doing some of those little to-do lists. They've been behind them. Maybe they'll play around a round of golf or two, uh, hit a couple of tennis balls. And, and one day they wake up with a raging case of anxiety because they realize their structure's gone. The structure of getting up and going to work or getting up and going on Zoom, working with other associates or I call them comrades, right? Comrades in arm because uh, we're creatures of habit and, and we almost immediately stopped a habit that's been going on for 30 and 40 years. And so suddenly we're like, uh, you know, am, am I going to just freak out here? Am I going to pass out? Am I going to just not know what to do? So uh, so enjoy, but but but. Bring discipline back into your life. And, and it could be something as sim- simply, uh, first of all, start thinking about what life's going to look like. What do you want to do? Uh, you know, what do you want to see? Uh, what do you want to experience? Maybe it's classrooms. Maybe it's, um, uh, maybe you have a bucket list. Maybe you, you, you want some new healthy routines. Maybe you want to start actually using that treadmill that hold, <laughs> holds all the dry cleaning uh, when you come in the door there. Uh, um, you mean my really expensive <laughs> clothes rack? Don't make fun of my clothes rack now. Exactly. Well, you never know when you might use it, right? Or trip over it, one of the two. <laughs> um, that, that could be exercise, I guess. Sure, but, sure. Um, but you've got to make sure you don't feel like you're drifting along through life with no purpose. And so, you know, start building on that and, and begin introducing discipline. Now, for some people, they wake up the next morning disciplined. I understand that. For, sure. But most of us will wake up and just feel like, I'm free. And then two weeks later, they're like, oh, no, I'm free. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> Hey! Just wow, you took the words right out. You, yeah. Have you been have you been spying on me? That's exactly <laughs> what happens. Yeah. So so that's the first one. Make 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 sure you you uh, you know enjoy, but but introduce discipline back in your life. Sure, sure, and that can apply to not even just retirement, right there. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's true. That, that's true. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, I think some people enter into retirement, and there are so many things uh, that they need to do and mistakes they can make and. Uh, so it's tough. It's a balancing act. But if you have a plan and you work with a financial services professional who specializes in retirement, in other words, he, you're helping people retire every day. The rest of us just have to go through it once. But, Mark, you go through the retirement process every day of your life. Uh, so it's good to go to somebody who specializes and knows what's going on. And so I want to encourage our listeners to give you a call, sit down, and have a plan. So what's the next thing on the list? So this is more, a little more practical here is don't immediately downsize your house. Okay. I am, you know, every time somebody's approaching retirement, usually it's like six months to a year, they come in and say, we've decided we're going to sell and downsize. And I, you know, I understand why. And in fact, I many times encourage it, but I would wait till after retirement because really? you don't really know what retirement's going to be like. Hmm. You know, you don't know uh, emotionally. Well, first off, it, it, it can be expensive, you know. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and in our area, as many areas, I think now, there's a shortage of housing for people 50 and older. Yeah. So you sell this home you've had for 30 years, it's three stories tall, right? And, and move into this one level ranch where the yard's taken care of and you pay $200,000 more for it. And so that's problem one. But uh, it, it's just a matter of it's too much change, I think, at once. So wait mm. six months to a year. See, you know, you may figure out that this house may work after all because you don't know what that's retirement's going to look like. Yeah. yeah I've rethought this several times and then I've seen enough people go through this um, and even to the point they move again. You know, so they sure. moved right before retirement, and then they go, oh, well, this didn't work out. Um, and especially if it's long distance. You know, some people will say, well, i got a kid that lives in San Diego, and I've got one that lives in New York, and I've got one. I said, well, which one are you going to move near to? You know, well, the one with the grandkid. Okay, so they move there, and then guess what happens? 
kid too has a grandkid, right? And right. now you're like, well, I don't know. Where, so maybe you want to live right in the middle of all of them. Yeah. I don't know. But but let things settle down. Give it six months to a year and find out what changes have te- uh, taken place, not only physically, but emotionally. And, and yeah. see, you know, maybe you figure out that house you're in. Hey, if you shut off the upstairs, everything downstairs is what you need. It's beautiful for entertaining. It's, you know, whatever. You've got sure. it the way you want it. Let's just keep it, you know? And yeah. so... Wait True. a while. It's, it depends on your own. Everybody has a unique situation there with what they have and yep. what they need. But you're you're right. That is a good way to look at it. And you're right. I'll tell you what. My wife and I wish we lived in a Rambler now. I mean, of course, we're yep. both in our 50s, but we see the writing on the wall. Yep. And you're right. Those are just hard homes to find. The one mm-hmm. level uh, that's going to be yet the size you need, but one level. Right. And it's just those are those are actually more expensive because there are so many of these big three story houses that were built over right. the last 20 years. Nobody was building Ramblers. Right. So that's the problem or ranch style houses, I should say. Well, and the other so, thing, too, that I think I'm sorry to interrupt you, Tony, but, uh, you know, if you've got a little bit bigger house, you could consider renting out a room. Sure. Or renting out the basement, making that's extra true. money. That's uh, another good point. Well, yeah, plus if it's already almost paid for, if you ever needed to, you could do a reverse mortgage. And that's a oh, whole that's other true. discussion. But sure. pulling money out of your home and not having a house payment the rest of your life, yeah, you know, can be pretty powerful as well. So just, yeah. you know, again, and that's something, again, we have conversations virtually every day. Uh, about this type of situation but you said if you had uh if you have a child moving if you're a grown children one moves one's living in la one's living in new york my wife and i would move then to florida <laughs> you see what i'm saying or puerto rico <laughs> see what i did there yeah yeah, Co- yeah. costa rica belize uh, yeah wherever so uh what's the next thing on your list i would say this is going to sound kind of weird and and, and uh, you know like oh well duh But don't blow through your savings, okay? So, And what I mean by that is those first couple of years, you want to do everything on your list. Right. You want to go to Europe. You want to go to Australia. You want to do the New Zealand thing. You You want to buy a brand new RV and drive around the country. I was just going to say RV. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Those aren't cheap. uh, Yeah. Uh, so, So have a plan of spending because it's not like you're going to age 50 years in two years. So spread it out over five or 10 years and, and have a budget and, and realize you don't have to do it all at once. Sure. Um, uh, and so be careful, have a budget. You know, one of the things we do, Tony, as you know, is we do a very intensive, well thought out income plan. What's coming in, what's going out, where is it coming from, how is it taxed? And we build in these types of things, but do we want to build in four major trips in a year? Probably not, you know, depending right. on your money. So don't don't just say, hey, we may not live more than 10 years. Let's go do everything. And before you know it, you're living 30 years, right, or something like that. Right. So right. just be careful with that. It's, it's this dirty word we, we don't use much called budgeting. I don't know if I can say that on a family station, but you use the B word. That's uh, that scares yeah. people. People don't like that one. Nope, nope. So, <laughs> so that's 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 number three. Don't blow through your savings. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's another great one. Don't blow. A lot of people when they first retire, they get excited. Plus, that's when you're healthy, and it is when you should spend some money, but yep. not too much. Not all you of ha- it. You have to. Yeah, and again, before you do anything. Make sure you work with a financial services professional like yourself, Mark, to come up with a plan on how much you can spend. So yeah. uh, anyway, anyway, uh, what's the next thing on the list? we got to keep moving here. Yeah, yeah. So don't neglect your estate planning. So hopefully you've already got some things in place, but I would bet you don't. Most people that come in here, if they do have a will, they did it when their kids were born, right? And now they're... 30 years later, and they've never updated it. So they still have a guardian for their children if they die, even though the children are 30 years old, right? And so that's a great time to get your estate documents updated, wills, maybe you're a candidate for a trust, uh, a lot of reasons to do a trust. You certainly want your health care directive or health care power of attorney, because as we get older, more chance of having a need for health care where you need somebody to make decisions for you. Uh, and sure. of course, financial power of attorney. So don't neglect that. Kind of let retirement be maybe a launching point for getting some of this stuff done. Saying, you know, with this big change, there's some other things we need to take care of. And, and now that you've got, theoretically, a little more time on your hands, every retiree tells me they're busier than they've ever been, by the way. But 
theoretically you have more time on your hands and we guide you through the process we actually do the planning we 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 have the workbooks to fill out we help you fill them out we have attorneys part of our team that do the paperwork and so it's we really hold your hand through the whole process to make it as easy as it possibly can be Sure. Well, and that's and that makes sense. And you really want to make sure again, you don't you don't have to go it alone. Uh, these are things that you want to avoid and want to make sure you get right. Uh, but there is help out there. And I'm not going to name names, Mark Fricks, but I know that you're happy to help our listeners out there with this. Right. Well, what's great about what we do, Tony, is we do the holistic approach. So yep. everything we're talking about, we talk about. Uh, is part of that strategy, is part of that process, including all the other things we're not talking about today. Like I said, we're not talking about tax planning. We're not talking True. about income planning much. Uh, we're not talking about investing at all, right? Sure. Uh, so all these other things come together, but so do these personal things. You know, Tony, my clients, I know them better than the kids know them because I know their dreams, their thoughts, their worries, and a lot of these things they don't tell the kids. You yeah, know, so true. it's really, it's really interesting. It's, it's a, it's a great trust. It, it makes me feel really, you know, special to know that these people trust me to that extent. And a certain, we don't share it with anyone, even their kids. Right. Um, and so that's, um, that's really, um, that's why we call it the master plan family. Cause, cause we know each other so well and, and, you know, we've got lots of clients and yet I can't tell you more than a couple of that, that I don't know really, really well. So it makes it right. special. Yeah, it does. So what else do you have for us? So don't expect relationships to remain unchanged. Relationships are going to change. A couple of them will. Number one, friends could change because maybe they're not retired yet. And, hey, I want to go somewhere with somebody or we want to take a trip. And, hey, Bob and Sarah can't go because they're working. And, and so suddenly there could be some changes there. All right. Sure. Um, more importantly, it could be your children. OK, so your adult children, um, you know, uh, is there kind of does there begin kind of a, a role reversal where they start feeling that like they need to take care of you a little bit more? Now, that may happen later in the 70s and 80s, but that can start to transition a little bit. Um they, they may want some more of your time because now mom and dad are home. Can you watch the kids on Tuesdays and Thursdays while I work? It's going to save me $200 a week or whatever. And, of course, being a grandparent, you love to, but you also want to maintain that grandfather, grandmother, grandchild relationship. And so a lot of this stuff can be, you know, interesting. Uh, and this is kind of funny, too. The, the funny part is, is I've noticed that if somebody retires, the first thing that happens is people that know them, uh, will always call them to help them. Hey, I'm moving Monday, and I know you're retired. Can you come help me? <laughs> or something like that. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. We get that a lot, don't yeah. we? That's yep. funny. Yeah. Yep. Over my lifetime, I've had that happen. Yeah. yeah. And, and Arthur, find out you have a truck. That's the, that's the other thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it when my friends would, I'm getting a truck, and I'm like, good. Oh, uh, You're on good. my list. <laughs> yeah, good. That's, right. that's one way to maintain friendships with a lot of people. If you want to call it friendship, yeah, that's <laughs> we yeah, can call it that. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Good deal. People good deal. will treat you nicely Oh, uh, yeah. if you have and, a truck. And call yeah. you at all hours, too. So. Yes, exactly. You'll yeah. be busy every weekend. <laughs> and during the week too yeah, absolutely. yeah that's true we don't discriminate no. yeah my neighbor has a truck which is why i don't need one <laughs> i keep hoping, hoping my son to get a truck you know so. yeah, exactly encourage that <laughs> uh, uh well that's a good one uh obviously there's a lot here i mean you know when people yeah. first enter into retirement they have no idea because it's kind of it's like a full reversal a full 180 from what their lifestyle and yep. what they've been used to uh things get turned on their head and they they're not expecting this they mm -hmm. they're so used to living in that accumulation phase and working phase that retirement can pose these issues and i'm glad we're talking about them what's another one that you want to talk about today don't be afraid to try new things and this kind of goes back to what i mentioned earlier don't be afraid to go take that class don't be afraid to um, start a small business. Um, just the things you've always kind of dreamed of. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to go volunteer, well, you know, whether it's at the local hospital or your church or some ministry or some uh, homeless shelter or whatever. It doesn't mean you got to be there every day, but they will take whatever they can get. That's uh, true. Meet new people. And this kind of ties into the next one. Don't let, don't let yourself get lonely. And part of that is getting involved. You know, I get yeah. to know people. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a church attendee. And, and if I ever, you know, whenever I change churches and when I get to know people, the best way is to volunteer 
with different ministries. Yep. Because this group of 10 or 15 people that are working together on something, you start getting to know each other in different levels. And and, yeah. and so whether it be a travel club, whether it be, you know, a, a dinner club, I don't, you know, it could be anything, but, but don't, don't get lonely. Don't let yourself start being secluded. Yeah. Uh, don't let that, that everyday part of your life be that you get up, have a cup of coffee, a little bit of breakfast, pick up a little bit, uh, watch Fox news or whatever you watch, uh, eat lunch. And, and you know, don't let it be something different every day. And, and right. some of those need to be getting out of it's the house. It's easy to get into that rut in retirement, I think. And you've seen this yep. with people you work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's easy to get into a rut and it's easy to convince yourself, well, that's too hard to, uh, you know, it's too hard. There's not, there's nothing to do. And then if you tell them, oh no, there's a lot of ways. Yeah. There's, there's so many options out there and ways to stay active and stay involved and be with people in retirement but it's easy to convince yourself oh it's not it's too hard and i think a lot of people convince themselves of that but there are so many things there's book clubs there's bible studies there's uber uh, there's there's Dr- Uber. Yeah, drive you for don't Uber. have. You don't have. Well, that's true. You can be an Uber driver. Yeah, that's true. And just work uh, or, when you want or to. Or if make you don't have money. your own car uh, or don't like driving, you can Uber to places. You can Uber sure. and pay for the Uber. So, Absolutely. So yep. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways to make it work, and I know you have a litany of things that ideas that you can mm-hmm. give your clients because you've seen it all and can give our listeners. Right. So if they want to get more ideas about this, they can just pick up the phone and give you a call really quick Absolutely. before we go on. What's that number? Uh, phone number? Yeah. <laughs> phone number. What's your number? I thought you no, wanted your magic number. No, I'm asking actually, Mark, for the number. I thought you wanted my social is... security number for some no, reason. I don't no. know. I'm, uh, the number we're looking for is 42. 42. 42. Okay. No, 770-980-9262. Maybe easier would be the website, masterplanretire.com. A uh, great way to, to not only schedule an appointment, but find out more about us. Find the workshops. That could be something you do. I talked about classes. We've got oh several workshops that we teach every month about taxes and Social Security and other things. We've got one coming up on estate planning here in the next few months. So ah. uh, that's a great place to go, masterplanretire.com. Uh, it's perfect. And as you know, Tony, anybody that listens to the show, I will give 30, 40 minutes of my time just to chat. Questions. Um, I, I can't give recommendations because I don't know them at that point, but I can certainly sure. give some advice and give some direction. Sure. Uh, so, you know, make a, make a call, check out the website and love to meet with you. Yeah. Yeah. I know you love talking with uh, folks and would love to hear from our listeners. Yep. And you have so many reports you can run for them mm-hmm. regarding the financial side, like Social Security or talk to them about, you know, how to plan for health care and retirement. But really, these lifestyle issues and what you do in retirement is just as important it is. as the financial side. And then sometimes more so, you know, my grandfather will turn 101 Wow. This month, this month, February is his birthday and he's going strong. He's walking. Mm-hmm. He's still mentally sharp. Uh, people can't believe it. Now, up until this past year, he drove. He has a vehicle and um, he hasn't been driving lately since he had a stroke about a year ago. Uh, but he's getting back. He's the use of his uh, right sides come back. And now he's with a walker, but he's walking. He looks sharp. He's painting. He paints every day. And mm-hmm. and he I was just vis- I just went to visit him and he told me he's looking at buying a new camper. Oh, I love because it. <laughs> because his current camper has steps up into the bedroom section, ah, which are hard for him. Sure. And he needs something in case he has to be in his wheelchair. So he wants to get one with a lift and go camping still. A nice. fifth wheel trailer to pull behind the truck. I'm like, uh, you know, and uh, Etta, uh, his wife is sitting there. Uh, it, she, he's outlived two past wives. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> uh, and she's sitting there and go, just rolling her eyes like, <laughs> yeah, we're going camping. So uh, anyway. You want to stay. And his secret, though, the point is stay active. He stays active and you have to. And and that was kind of the final thought on that was was, it's not good for you just to be lonely and just to uh, not do nothing. You will physically deteriorate. Yeah, it's I've seen it happen over and over again. Yep. True. Well, good show today. Uh, One more time with that website. Masterplanretire.com. 
Uh, number 770-980-9262. Again, just say, hey, I listened to the show and I'd like to uh, set up a time to chat with Mark. It could be a telephone call. It could be a Zoom call. It can be you come by the office. Our main office is in the Atlanta area. Um, and we've got some satellites all around the southeast. But most importantly, uh, we really love Zoom or phone calls for the first chat because it, we, we're just talking. You know, find out what's going on, what your concerns are, goals, things of that nature. So it was 770-980-9262 and masterplanretire.com. Hope to hear from you. I love hearing from listeners. I had a meeting last night with a listener and said, he was telling me what I talked about in the show. And I'm like, oh, I remember that show, you know. So sure. That's it's awesome. Really, it's a lot of fun. It really is. It, all right. Well, hey, that does it for today's episode of Retirement Roadmap Radio with our host, Mark Fricks. And always, uh, as always, thanks for joining us. All radio shows are available on podcast on all the major podcast carriers. Uh, but finally, let me just remind you, always plan well and prosper. Have a great day, everybody. <music>